Hello, my name is Kathleen Rains. I'm a mixed media collage artist and welcome to Tune In Tuesday, where I share weekly art demos to expand your mixed media toolbox. This week I'm going to show you how to use water gel beads to make abstract collage papers. Never heard of water gel beads? Well, neither did I until I just stumbled on them which of course led me down a long rabbit hole of experimenting with tons of ways of doing this. And that's what I'm going to share with you. All of the links for the supplies I'm going to be using are down below in the description. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd be honored if you would. That really supports me continuing to offer these free art demos. Also, while you're exploring down below, check out the free five day class called Collage Kickstart where I show you how to use all the papers that you make during Tune In Tuesday to make your own collages. So let's get into it. All right, so where we're headed is to make these abstract papers. And these are simply made with these water gel beads that look like this. They're little tiny beads, but they're not actually tiny. So these are absorbent polymer. And when you add water to them, they will grow 100 to 150 times their original size. In fact, they'll be 99% water once we soak them in water. And we'll actually bounce them against this paper to make these beautiful abstracts. Now you can do it on a number of different kinds of papers. So this is actually rice paper. Those of you who have been following me for a while know this is one of my favorite papers because not only can I get a design on this side, but it absorbs on the back side. So I've got a light value and I've got kind of a medium dark value. I have two different choices here, which I absolutely love, but you can also do it. This is watercolor paper. It's actually black watercolor, cold pressed paper. I think this is gorgeous. You could also do it on mixed media paper or you could just do it on plain old copy paper. This works phenomenally well as well. So there's a lot of choices here in terms of just using what you already have. Now, the first step is to make these little plastic balls grow. And I've actually placed mine in some tins. I actually cover these. Um, I actually have them covered when I'm not using them. Because they are water soluble, if there's any humidity in the air, they actually do stick together. As you can see, these are actually already sticking because I wasn't all that careful and left them uncovered. So then what you wanna do is take some cups and put a small amount of the beads in each one. So if you can see, I'm just barely pinching. There's not that many in here. Do the same thing. This is very small. These are also very small, but they're a tiny bit bigger. These large ones are going to grow many times the size that you see here. So I'm not gonna put that many in here, maybe eight. And then I'm gonna cover these with water. So for the small ones, I'm gonna add just about a half of this cup filled with water. And for the large ones, I'm gonna fill the entire cup up. And these will take varying amounts of time to actually grow. So the small ones will take about three hours to get their full size. The large ones can take maybe even 10 hours. I mean, it depends on each one of these that was a tiny bit different size. So the larger the ball, the longer it takes to uh, make it grow to its full size. And here's the end result. You can see we've got really sweet little squishy balls here. Because they're water soluble, they tend to stay kind of moist. Um, these are the, the medium ones. Oops, missing ball there. So, you know, they're quite a bit bigger than their original size. And these are huge. Now, I did take a couple of these out of there because they were actually overflowing um, over, the, over the cup. Now, the next part of this is to add paint to these. So as some of you may know, I use a limited color palette uh, for most of my collage paper making. Um, I do a, a red, yellow, and a blue. I always stick with the same ones. Um, this is Philo Blue Green Shade. This is Hansa Yellow Light. My red is Quinn Magenta, but for this particular project, I'm not putting the red into it. Um, this particular paint is a Nova paint, which I absolutely adore because it has a really nice consistency. It's a cross between a fluid acrylic and a heavy body. So you get a really nice pouring consistency. So what I wanna do 
is add a little paint to each one of these. And again, there's already water in here, so it'll make it a little bit of like a, a watery consistency over the balls. So I want different colors for each one of these. So I'm gonna add some blue here. And because there's water on here, it's just gonna mix in with it. So I'll have a dark color. And I'm actually gonna add some blue here too. And I want this to be a little teal. So I'll have this one blue. We'll make this one a little teal. And this one, I'm also gonna add just a touch of blue. And I'm gonna add some white to it because I'd like to have a baby blue color. I'm gonna take a spoon and I'm literally going to stir them just to cover the balls with the paint. So that's a nice dark blue. This one, get it all mixed up. Yeah, I've got a nice teal there. In fact, I probably could put a little more yellow, but I like that color. In fact, yeah, I think that's good. And there is, is a lot of paint on here, so this is gonna add to this color, but I still am getting a nice light blue with this. So this is basically my palette. This is what I'm gonna to use to balance off the papers. When I was experimenting with this project, I also mixed up some green balls. I've got some dark ones and I've got some kind of baby green ones. So I've got nice variety of colors to choose from. Now, the next thing you need is some kind of box. So this is just an Amazon box. Um, I'm actually not gonna use this, but this is something more than likely you've got readily available. So you need a box that has, you know, uh, sides like this. And what you would do if you're going to use a box version is you would just tape up, up the sides because what you need is something that has tall sides to it. If you've got some kind of container that already will do this, that's fantastic. I ended up using is this Ikea box. Um, this is actually, for those of you who uh, go to Ikea, it's a Krugis, K-U-G-G-I-S. Um, it's about a 10 by 13 with about a seven inch uh, lid. But even this was not tall enough to catch all the splatters. So these are also, um, these are lids off another Ikea box. So what I did just to create a higher, a kind of like a, basically you're gonna be bouncing things into the box. So I want a pretty high kind of wall. So I'm just gonna kind of create an artificial wall around here. All right, so now I have got my basic kind of play, play pin here, and I can play with doing this on different papers. Now, probably my favorite paper ever is this rice paper. I'm gonna start with these. These are kind of like a teal. I'm gonna take a spoon. I'm just gonna make sure I got paint all over them. Now, this is very technical. <laughs> so you literally, drop them. And I'm going to, so right there, <laughs> I've got an unusual paper that it's hard to recreate that. And I also have some, so right, I would actually just leave it there. So now there are some, these little beads are sitting all over the place. But I'm just going to drag, pull this up. And all by itself, I think that's really a very cool little abstract piece, particularly if I'm using it in a collage. You know, I'll just use a little corner of that. And on the back, I've got a design too. This is copy paper, but actually before I do that, um, I could leave all of these um, beads in here, but they're going to pile up really fast. So I'm just gonna, as quickly as you can, pull these up with a spoon. Um, you actually can't get them up with your hand very well because they're completely squishy. By taking these up in between rounds, um, I can have more room to put my paper down. So I'm just going to lay this down. I'm going to kind of lay it underneath my little artificial walls there. So I got my green ones here. To be honest, this is more green than I like. So I think what I'm going to do is add more yellow to here because I really prefer a uh, kind of a, not still really green. I'm gonna add some white just for kicks. It's better, still a little on the green side. It's just, I have, I have so much liquid in there, so it takes a lot of yellow in order to get it. But this is better. 
Okay, so I have, actually have one of the really big beads in there, but I'm gonna ignore that. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. I could actually bounce it across, you know, against the, the wall itself, which actually produces one result. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> By the way, I could just like splat it right off of my spoon. Let me get those because ideally I want to keep my colors separate. Now, the cool thing about this technique to me, one is completely unpredictable. And the other thing is that it's very layerable. Is that a word? Layerable? So I've got an interesting layer right here. And I actually like that color. It's not a color I usually use in my art. So I think what I'm gonna do next, I've got, this is kind of like a light blue color. Now I've got some green on my spoon. I'm not gonna keep changing spoons. So I'm just gonna dip in. So just add some, oh my goodness. Okay, so <laughs> this looks like child's play because it is. It is definitely child's play. So pull some of these up. Now what's gonna happen is because I'm putting them back in to what was a baby blue, this is a lot of green now. So now I'm gonna have a green shade, which is I don't care. This is kind of like an evolution. Are you kind of you kind of makes it kind of well unpredictable, you know? So you don't really know how this is going to work, and just see what happens. So I'm going to take one of these blue ones. In this case, I am going to just use my hand and just plop it. Now this is when it gets really interesting. Cause look at that. Now this looks like it's really juvenile stuff, but it is. I mean, it's, I love that. I love the the big. Um, put this back in here and get this really big one. It's just some, you know, like really interesting shapes that's creating some layers, which I think are quite lovely. Oh, now <laughs> here's the problem with these things. They fall apart. But that's not the norm. If I had let this ball sit for like another 24 hours, it would have gotten more stable. So it would have been easier to balance it. And I'm gonna take these, these are fresh. Actually, these aren't even fully, uh, fully baked yet and full of getting all the water in them because I really want a darker color and the color has gotten a little diluted. I'm gonna put a little bit, a tiny bit of water in here because it's gotten a little thinned out. Okay, now we got something interesting. So now just put another, oh yeah, put another layer on it. I'm sorry, but it actually is incredibly fun to do. All right, so now I can, this is a very wet piece of paper, obviously. This is a 28 pound piece of copy paper. So it's a little bit higher quality than your normal copy paper. And you can see the edges have not really been affected, but I really like that. I think it's really beautiful. And it's some interesting designs that I normally wouldn't do on my own. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, put them in the green container magic walls back up. So this is watercolor paper, black, white, black cold press watercolor paper. So we've got these big ones and I think the big ones will actually really be cool as a base. So I'm just gonna stir them up a little bit. Got a little bit of teal and blue in there, which make it even prettier. So I'm just gonna take one of them. <laughs> this will probably break too. Yep, it broke. I think it's because these might be newly minted. I think I just made them this morning. So, I'm gonna... so I just pulled out some ones that I made from several days ago, and these are much more sturdy. They're full of water, and I think these are gonna work better. Yeah, that is much better. So lesson learned, you need to have lots of ink, or not lots of ink, you need to have make sure that they're full of water, and these are. This is white but I've got a lot of colors on here. So that's gonna mix together. Oh, it's so pretty. And so, yeah, I love that. And let's just move these off. Yeah, I don't have enough ink on this. So I'm gonna, when I say ink, this is actually acrylic paint. So I'm just gonna mix that up a little bit. And now, Oh yeah, I don't know, There's something about that. That's done, we are gonna leave it alone. 
because it is so water saturated that I want all those drips to be exactly as they are. So we're gonna leave that. Yes, I've got, I have this paper. This is homemade watercolor paper. And rather than take the time to pull all these little beads up, I am just going to leave them there. Okay. Yeah, this is a beautiful contrast. In fact, this might be the best paper of all because you actually see all the different colors that this actually had in it. Now I've got this one, which has got a lot of green, but I'm gonna add some more white to it because I really don't want it to be quite so green. Now it's more white. So I'm just gonna, oh yes. So just for the record, this is incredibly fun to do. Okay, so I've got this dark blue. But I think what I'm gonna do, <laughs> the little mad scientist, I'm gonna add that to it. So I've got a different color blue now. Drain off some of the water. Yeah. And what this really needs now, in my, you know, ball dropping opinion, is some uh, darker blue on top. By the way, this, uh, to me, this could be an art all by itself. I don't need to actually turn it into a collage, but it will get turned into a collage because I think this paper is just gorgeous. So this is one of the big ones and I'm just gonna take it and drop it just to add a little bit of um, interest in a couple places. I think that's it. I think that's a wrap. So of course I could keep doing it and doing it and doing it. I just, I really love that. I just think that is a really interesting abstract paper. That I okay, my papers are all dry and I've got such a variety from using that very limited palette with just different kinds of papers. Like I'm in love with this black with the bright colors on top. Um, this is uh, just copy paper and actually this, oh actually this is rice paper. So on the back, you, there's a different design on that. And this is handmade watercolor paper. Not much on the back, but I actually think that's kind of interesting too. So I might be able to, it does seep through a bit um, on the handmade water paper. And again, all of the supplies for this are in the bottom of this video. So you don't have to go look for any of these things. Of course, I couldn't just stop here because it's so much fun. Once you start bouncing balls, you know, there are just so many variations of this. So of course I had to keep going. I hope so I hope you enjoyed this art demo and I would be honored if you would subscribe to this channel, which helps to support me in offering future art demos through Tune In Tuesday. And thank you so much for joining me today on this lesson on abstract papers with water gel beads.